everyone. Tom Dixon here, your host of the Financial Experts Network, and delighted you can join us for a special session on very important topics uh, around taxes and all of the issues that are now being brought to bear because of the Build Back Better plan that was first proposed on September 13th in the House and Ways Committee. And wow, does it have implications really for many people, including middle America, small business owners, and the like. So it's not just the wealthy that could be impacted by this plan. So I'm delighted to have join us one of our many experts that we're fortunate to have join us on the Financial Experts Network, and that's CPA Scott Bishop uh, to discuss some of the provisions in the Build Back Better plan. Scott is a master elite edge slot advisor as well as the executive director of Wealth Solutions for Avidian Wealth Management. So really delighted, Scott, to have you here uh, to join us. So thank you so much for taking the time. Happy to be on, Tom. Great. Now, as always, folks, please, I encourage you to subscribe to our channel and, of course, click on that bell, ding, 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 to get notice of all upcoming posts and videos that, that we will make available. So, Sure. So a wash sale rule is something where the government has on most publicly traded securities because a lot of people at the end of the year, Tom, want to do what's called tax loss harvesting. We do that for our clients all the time to try to reduce capital gains. Again, we talked about capital gains in another, another one of these versions. We may want to accelerate gains because of the possible changes in the tax laws beyond the scope of this particular video. But if you do have a tax loss and you do want to harvest that tax loss, let's say you bought Exxon Mobil stock when it was at a much higher point and you're at a loss, but you really like Exxon, but you want to take the loss. If you sold Exxon to take that loss and then immediately bought it back or bought it back in a day or two, the government disallows that loss as a wash sale because you really weren't out of the stock. You bought right back in again. They basically say you have to wait over 30 days to buy back into the stock to avoid the disregarding of that loss. That's a wash sale rule. To this point, cryptos, you could have bought Bitcoin at 60,000 of Bitcoin, sold it out at 40, and immediately two seconds later, maybe not best practices, bought Bitcoin back again because it was not subject to those same wash sales and not been out of Bitcoin. They're putting it in place now, Tom, where possibly starting January 1st, 2022, crypto may be treated like a security for wash sale rules. They're actually extending the wash sale rules to cover cryptocurrencies and NFTs like non-fungible tokens. Yeah, so as an example, using the securities example, if you really liked Exxon but wanted the loss for the tax year and you sold it and bought Chevron, it's another oil and gas company, that would not have violated the wash sale rules. You can't buy an identical security and have those wash sales exist. So that's what the issue is with the wash sale rules. You can't buy the same security. Bitcoin and Ethereum are different cryptocurrencies with different purposes and different uses. So that would be a great way to be in there. But if you really like Bitcoin and think the short term is, it, it, the loss is just gonna be short term in nature, you can't go back and buy Bitcoin again. If they have these new ETFs, maybe you could sell Bitcoin and buy that ETF. There may be things you could do right now but you can't do that. One thing I did want to also mention in this vein is for the last several years that people have been trading in Bitcoin, there's really been no way for the government to even track it because those exchanges did not actually track any of that type of stuff. One of the things that happened with the infrastructure plan that was passed by the Senate that has not been approved yet by the House, they actually put in place legislation to make sure that there's actually going to be tracking and stuff given to the IRS so they can track these things. So for people that thought it was going to be under the radar, it is not. You're going to have to proactively tell people when you sign your tax return whether or not you have a crypto account. If you don't answer that question truthfully, they can come back to you for tax evasion. Now that this information is going to be given to the IRS, they're going to be able to track it. So 
Crypto is not a way to avoid paying income tax. If you like the idea of crypto and other types of, and Bitcoin and Ethereum, and you think it's a way to build wealth, that's great. But don't necessarily think of it as a secret transaction that the IRS won't find out about. big plug but i downloaded that after that webinar and looked at it with some of my crypto accounts one of the things that's really nice is the basic one is free if you pay up a little bit it tracks all of your transactions gives you the stuff you will need to report it and it identifies potential um uh, wash sales that you could do losses that you could harvest so if you're if you maybe bought a little bit high this year and it's down and you need some losses this year or you want some losses this year may not be the worst thing to do is to look at that coin tracker it's a pretty cool app Great. Okay. Well, we're going to, yeah, absolutely. So again, we would uh, glad you added that. And uh, uh, again, I'd encourage you to take a look at that. It sounds like Scott would as well. And certainly, uh, again, feel free to, to check out the webinar that I, I hosted a, a few weeks ago with Shihan as well. So Scott, anything else you'd add in closing for crypto investors to be thinking about? No, I think if you're going to be in crypto though, what is that what that they always say, hold, be a holdler or whatever they call it, uh, because it's very volatile. If you can't stand your stuff going up five, six, eight percent or down five, six, eight percent a day, it's not for the weak of heart, but it's a really interesting platform that should be something you should get yourself knowledgeable about and under, never invest in something you don't understand. If you're going to invest in crypto, do some research and understand it. And again, I'd lean on your advisors, no question. And by the way, I, I like the idea of ETFs as well. Uh, again, there are some ETFs out there that will give you exposure. And, and as always, you should be thinking about this in the context of asset allocation, your risk tolerance. Those are important principles to keep in mind. So, all right, great. Well, Scott, thanks so much for your insights on this important topic. Folks, this is one of several videos we've uh, posted with, with Scott and hope you take advantage of all of them.